Hey guys, Beat Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update on this Monday. I want to go to radar first because our storm system is moving south into the Intermountain West. You can see the leading edge, which is really representing the cold front there, that banded area precip of rain and snow moving into uh, Montana, approaching parts of uh, Wyoming, the Tetons, Yellowstone. It's moving through Idaho and it is on the approach into uh, the Wasatch and the high Uintas. That's going to hit tonight with good snow production tonight and throughout the day tomorrow across the Wasatch and the high Uintas. And out ahead of it, a very interesting phenomenon. I think we're going to see a focused flow with quite a bit of lift. Um, two bullseyes developing over parts of Colorado. Explain that in a second. But here's the radar out of uh, Utah. You can see the front approaching from the northwest. So eventually that's going to set up right over the top of um, the Wasatch and the high Uintas. In Colorado, you can already see it see it starting to um, develop this, this banded area of precip from the San Juans to the West Elks. Two bullseyes. I think we're going to see some really good lift and some good snowfall accumulation over the higher peaks of um, the West Elks, which is you know a lot of Pitkin County down and towards the Crested Butte, uh, Aspen Snowmass higher up, and then down into the San Juans over the top of Silverton and Telluride and Wolf Creek in those areas. So we will focus, I'll focus on those areas coming up. I want to give you the lay of the land. So this is the water vapor satellite imagery and drier air aloft is oranges and reds. Your moisture is in the whites and the blues and there's our area of low pressure coming in from the Pacific Northwest. And eventually it's gonna turn and track through Wyoming, kind of straddling Wyoming, Colorado, and then it will move away. And that's not it. There's another area of low pressure behind it, but this one will be smaller, weaker, and it will move faster through mainly the Northern tier. And then behind it is a very interesting forecast with potentially a phase, a phasing of two different storm systems. So we'll cover all that. Here are my bullet points this afternoon. So. Here are the best time frame. Here's the key time frame for snow, Wasatch. It's going to be developing tonight, throughout the day tomorrow. Some more snow on 11.3 and 11.6. Tetons, light snow tonight, tomorrow. A heavier snow possible, 11.1, 2, and 3, and 11.6. Colorado, you've got snow that will develop, especially across the western and southwest parts of the state, um, tonight, tomorrow, and then everybody gets it all the way through 1030. Another shot of some pretty good snow, 11.5 and 11.6. The two bullseyes are going to be the Elks and the San Juans. Hey, I want to send a shout out to um, all the guys uh, over at Aspen Sardi Field who are watching these videos that I make, and you can see right there at the Op Center, thanks to Ryan Woodrow and Corey Gates. And there I am. Thanks for uh, sending me this video, guys. Really appreciate you watching, truly. All right, here we go into um, a time height forecast, and I'll tell you, this is just a heck of an example about what we're going to see here. This is Schofield Pass humidity forecast through all of the atmosphere, a slice of the atmosphere vertically. Schofield Pass is in the heart of this, is in the heart of the Elk Mountains, the West Elk Mountains. It's just west of the Maroon Bells, if you know where those are, near Bellevue Mountain. Right in the heart, so it gives you an idea of what we're going to see at the highest of elevations. I think Schofield's at about 107. So you're, you know, you're looking at 10,000 plus. But look at the height of the column of humidity of green. It is deep, guys, and it's all the way from the peaks to jet stream level. And you can see by the wind barbs, we're blowing 50, 60, 70 knots and it is transporting this this moisture throughout the atmosphere. It's transporting it. So we're seeing quite a bit of lift, and it's that's big time, right? That's deep snow. That's That would translate to deep snow in this case. And that happens tonight, tomorrow. Then the moisture is not as deep on the 30th through late 30 into early 31. It's 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 not as, not as deep, so we won't see quite as much of accumulation with the second part of the storm system. And then it's dry air once we get into 31. And this is the kind of setup that I'm seeing down in the San Juans, too, with that deep plume of initial moisture surging. All right, here's the jet stream forecast, and this is by the close of business today. You can see the trough moving in with the area of low pressure, and here's prime time on the 29th. That's when we're cranking out the snow and we're just exhausting it throughout the atmosphere. Um, and Colorado's in on the action there, 1029. Here we are on 1030, still snowing in Colorado, but it moves away. Now on 1031, storm system is moving through the northern tier. It's faster and weaker, but it has some snow from Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and BC. Here comes the third storm system. Look at it diving to the south into the lower 48. 
even down potentially into Mexico, a deep trough. And it actually gets cut off. Look at it right here from the main flow. Now, here is where the magic can happen. This low starts to make its move back to the north towards the four corners, Colorado, New Mexico. At the same time, simultaneously, there's a cold front coming south from Canada. Will the two merge over the four corners? If it does, we're looking at widespread snow and a bigger storm system. The two look like they may merge perfectly in this morning's update, even yesterday. This afternoon, it's a little less perfect, but there's still some merging going on. They might be out of phase. We'll have to wait and see, but that could be a very interesting setup. All right, looking at the forecast radar and satellite, here we go. Let's put this into motion. So by tomorrow morning, you've got snow over the top of the Wasatch, Tetons, Wind Rivers, High Uintas, and a lot of western Colorado. And then the low begins to move through Wyoming, kind of straddling Colorado. The Colorado line intensifies a little bit, quite a bit of snow for parts of Wyoming, Casper all the way over to Hagadon. Um, snowing over the mountains of Colorado. And in Denver, we might see a rain shower, but I think the best chance to see a rain or snow shower in Denver is going to be on Wednesday uh, with the, the final piece of this as it rotates through and the temperature drop as well. But So there's Tuesday, 5.15. Here's Wednesday. So the last piece kind of rotates through, and right there is the shot of maybe rain, snow for Denver. Here comes the second storm system cruising through the northern tier. You can see that happening. It's, it's a weaker storm, but does deliver accumulation, and then it moves through. Now, here comes the third storm diving through the Sierra, and it goes all the way to the south, and then it kind of disappears, but it comes back on 11.5. Look at this. So 11.5, second half of the day, the low comes up from the north. Look at its snow, widespread potentially. And you have the front coming in from the north. Now watch what happens here. Very interesting. By 11.6, there is some phasing and there is some merging going on. Widespread snow, bigger storm. And look at it by 11.6 in the afternoon, evening hours. Look at that. If that, if this, this is going to be an interesting time frame for the middle of next week. That's all I'm going to say. But here's my snow forecast. Rest of today through the 30th accounts for this first storm system. Two bullseyes in Colorado, one over the Elks, West Elks there down into the San Juans. West Elks 10 to 18 inches, somewhere in that range for Schofield, high up on snow mass on the Cirque, um, high on Aspen Mountain. Um, looking at the Maroon Bells, Capital in that 10 to 18 inch range, Crested Butte higher up. Um, and then the second bullseye is down in the San Juans, 10 to 20 inches down there over Wolf Creek, Red Mountain, Molas, Silverton Ski Area, Telluride, Purgatory. So clearly two, two areas that are going to get the most snow. Up in Summit County, I-70, probably 4 to 8 inches and probably 4 or 5 inches up around Loveland A Basin, Winter Park, Keystone. Up in Wyoming, about a foot for Hoggaden. Um, probably six inches or so, maybe seven or eight in the Wind Rivers, but quite a bit less for the Tetons. The flow just isn't as good there. Seven to ten for the Wasatch, and I think we'll actually see another seven to ten. Here's a second time period. This is 1031 through 11.6, so another seven to ten for the Wasatch. Anywhere in pink here, purple, is a foot or more, and there's, a, there's quite a bit of a foot or more here. Now, in Colorado, I brought the numbers down from this morning because... It's not a perfect merger. The phase is a little bit delayed. And so that puts a lot of the heavy snow into parts of Utah and certainly up in Wyoming where we could see a foot or more for the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone, Big Sky, um, and some moderate snowfall through Idaho, Northwest Montana, and BC. And the numbers have gone up for the Sierra, assuming the storm digs that far to the south, 6 to 10 on the way there. So both time frames um, are showing a lot of action and quite a bit of snowfall accumulation for a few areas. There's time period one and again, time period two. Thanks guys. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care. Have a great night.